one of the beauties of the WeFly 8-channel transmitter is that it's not only a computer radio with the ability to hold the memory of a whole bunch of different models, but I can go ahead and put in endpoints mixing, uh, servo reversing, all the usual flavors that come with a uh, computer type transmitter. A uh, very economical package. Uh, what I'm going to do here is assign it to the Gato. And you do that by pressing the menu, hitting the power switch, you get into model select, you get the menu, and then you select your model. In this case, it's the Gato. So I'm looking for the Gato prompt. I hit enter. I get a prompt to uh, reset. Reset power. And right now the transmitter has got all of the presets unique to the Gato. So what I do now is I remove the top of the Gato, but first take off the sail, which is magnetically mounted. Then the superstructure itself, which reveals the interior. Since the transmitter is already on, all I have to do is turn on the mission switch, let the devices run through their protocols. So here's throttle, low pressure blower, vent, uh, better deploy the bow plane as you've seen here. I'll do that again. I'll cycle the bow plane, the rigged out. Bring the bow planes back in. Operate the rudder. And once I firm everything is working, I figure out how I'm going to hook up the, uh, the induction system. We've got the uh, snorkel head valve here with its hose, and I put a notch in its float to hold the hose during assembly. Later on, I fish out the other end of the hose and make up the two, and that completes the union of the uh, induction line between the snorkel head valve and the subdriver. So I'm going to lay this in there where I can get at it, lay the superstructure down on top of the lower hull, make sure things are lined up. A little bit of a chore making sure that the bow hands line up, and they, they do. And I make sure all the indexing tabs between the upper and lower hull halves in alignment. Push the hull forward, which engages back here in a single 440 screw holds the entire superstructure down on the hull. Now that previously mentioned hose, I fish it out of the hull here. As you can see, there's a tube which will make up the snorkel induction portion of induction line. And that completes the union between snorkel head valve and the rest of the uh, subdriver's semi-aspirated system. Check that the full valve works properly, and uh, then all I have to do is slip on the sail. It's already been checked out on the bench. I've done my pre-missions. Uh, we're in the middle of a mission now, which is to check out, again, the operation. The bow planes have been rigged out. Check the bow planes. Check the rudder. Stern planes and throttle. It's an audio on the uh, low pressure blower, so I listen to that, and I hear the hum, and I hear the pop of the vent valve, so I know everything's working. Then I put it in the water, and we check out for uh, operation in water. Uh, when you're handling the model, it's a good idea to keep the ball planes rigged in for obvious reasons. And while you're still pier, pier side, Check out your ballast system. Right now we're in surface trim. When I move the stick to the left, that opens up the vent on top of the ballast tank. The vent opens, the air escapes, water displaces the air filling the ballast tank, and we assume submerged trim. Surface tension has to be broken if the model's dry. You can just do that by punching it like that. So we're in submerged trim. I'm going to make sure I check out all the bubbles. See some of them escaping through the sail. The ideal is just a little bit of the sail sticking out of the water. It represents about a half ounce of positive buoyancy. That's pretty good trim. Now, before we get underway, we're going to blow the ballast tank. 
move the stick to the right. Right now it's scavenging air out of the sub-driver into the ballast tank. That'll get the uh, sail up far enough where the snorkel head valve will open and then it will take atmosphere and dump that into the ballast tank and that effectively blows the tank dry. Now the operation takes 90 seconds. I can see it's working. I'm, I, I'm not going to wait anymore. I'm going to stop blowing. I'm going to go ahead and rig out the uh, bar lines. Check them for operation. I'm going to vent the tank, get us back the smirch trim, put a little dive in the stern planes, go ahead slowly, full dive on the bow planes, and take this thing down to periscope depth. And there we are. Of course, the object of the game is to keep as little of the, of the uh, scope out of the water as possible. The Gato is perhaps the best running of the submarines I have here. Very, very stable in submerged trim. As you can see, even a tight turn, depth control is assured. Now, after running at one circuit, I'm going to go kill my headway by going all back and running. Let's see. I'll stop. You see those bubbles jump out of there? There was some bubbles and trapped in the hull. We have pretty good trim, a little light in the bow. But that's good enough. So we'll just continue underway going ahead. All right, I'm going to blow the ballast tank at this point. Now the real submarines had a thing called bow buoyancy, where they would actually slam a bunch of air into the bow, and that would raise the bow so you can get their induction valve on the deck above the surface. But I don't have that luxury, so I, I'm commencing to blow submerge. You notice how quickly the boat came up. Now with the uh, sail out of the water, I want to demonstrate by removing the sail that underneath is a flight control induction valve here. It's now pulling the air from the atmosphere to that induction valve. So clearly it has to be above the surface. Blowing the valve stink takes 90 seconds. It's a, it's a long process, so I'll go ahead and retract the uh, bow planes. Get those out of the way. There you see the boat now coming up to full surface trim. World War II era submarines typically ran on the surface, so they were built for speed on the surface. And as you can see, this model pretty much captures that building. The real boats could do about 20 knots and say on four main engines. There we have 